Hey guys, Duke here, and today we are going to take a look at the new seasonal artifact mods for Season of the Splicer. This season's artifact is called the Paradrome Cube, which you can get from completing the opening seasonal mission involving meeting up with Mithrax and helping him out. Once you finish with that, go to the helm in the newly opened up section to talk to the servitor set up there and get your artifact. As with every season, we have a new set of champion-specific mods to talk about first. This season's anti-barrier mod options are anti-barrier auto rifle and anti-barrier scout rifle. With last season having the option to use the incredibly strong anti-barrier sniper rifle, scouts didn't see as much use as they maybe normally would, but they will be a great long range and safe option for champions this season, especially with some of the new scout rifles we have coming into the fold. I'm trying to avoid spoilers on specifics for those that don't want to know, but it's out there. And if you do like scouts, this season should have some exciting options. For overload champions, our options for this season are either submachine guns or hand cannons. Again, last season has one of the strongest, if not strongest overload options in overload bow, and this season's two options are less than inspiring, especially with the incredibly difficult glassway strike as part of the Grandmaster rotation this season. As a reminder though, divinity is always an overload option and a great one at that, and may be used more often this season due to the relative difficulty of proccing overload with hand cannons, and even more so SMGs. Lastly, for unstoppable champions, this season's options consist of sidearms and... Wait. What? Grenade launchers? Yes. It's true. Bungie has somehow made anarchy even more insane. Please... If you don't have Anarchy yet, stop this video, go get it. Come back whenever you get it, I don't, I don't care, but however long it takes, go get Anarchy now. It was already insane, now it has a champion mod to go with it, and on top of this, there is even another mod we are going to talk about towards the end of this video that makes Anarchy and grenade launchers in general even more insane. Long story short, Anarchy was the best weapon in the game before these mods, and they made it even better. The second and third columns of the artifact are all mods that we already have access to, but cheaper, one energy versions of them. The mods available here are Grenade Launcher Scavenger, which gives you increased grenade launcher ammo when picking up ammo bricks, and Rocket Launcher Scavenger, which does the same thing except with rocket launchers. Unflinching Pulse Rifle Aim reduces flinching from incoming fire when aiming pulse rifles, and Unflinching Auto Rifle Aim which does the same for auto rifles. There is also Scout Rifle Loader, which increases the reload speed of Scout Rifles, and Rocket Launcher Loader, which increases the reload speed for rockets. There are also two Charged with Light specific mods, Blast Radius and Argent Ordnance. Blast Radius allows you to become Charged with Light when rapidly defeating enemies with grenade launchers or rocket launchers. And as you can see so far, and we'll see later, there's a lot of good mods with grenade launchers and rocket launchers this season. While Argent Ordnance, allows your rockets to do more damage and reload faster when charged with light. Finally, we have Grenade Launcher Dexterity, which gives faster ready and stow speed for grenade launchers, and Ashes to Assets, which grants bonus super energy on grenade kills. The fourth column is where the artifact starts getting really interesting. As mentioned earlier, the first mod here is Unstoppable Grenade Launcher, which will allow you to use a grenade launcher as your unstoppable weapon of choice continuing the trend of special and heavy ammo-based champion mods, which is a huge boon to not have to run double primaries. Like with Unstoppable Shotgun and Anti-Barrier Sniper Rifle though, it is an expensive energy cost at 7 energy, but in any mode with Unstoppables, I see this being well worth the cost. Next we have Hammer of the Warmind. This mod will allow detonations from Warmind cells to stun both Overload and Unstoppable champions. With Warmind cells already being very strong, Along with SMGs being an overload option this season, even with SMGs themselves not being great or consistent against overloads, I could see this pairing extremely nicely with an Ikelos or 7th Seraph SMG, along with Global Reach and this mod to have extra champion takedown potential. Especially at only one energy, this mod is at the very least worth experimenting with. Sundering Blast creates an explosive blast when stunning a champion. My first instinct with this mod is that it seems kinda weak, especially for something like GMs, unless of course the blast has either a huge radius or the damage caused by the blast is just massive. This mod is definitely a wait and see for the moment though. 
Surge Detonators is a repeat from last season which allows your arc grenades to stun Overload champions. With us having weaker options to deal with Overloads this season, I could see this mod getting even more use, although it was already an auto-include for most running either Chaos Reach or Thunder Crash in Overload-related content previously. The last mod in the fourth column is... Unstoppable Schwartz Child Condenser. I'm pretty sure Bungie named it this just to laugh at us, trying to pronounce it. This mod allows Void Melees to stun Unstoppable Champions. I don't see this mod having a ton of use outside of maybe Void Hunters with their Smoke Grenade, because you almost certainly do not want to count on running up to an Unstoppable Point Blink to be able to stun it. Now for the fifth and final row, and boy do we start out with a wild one. Breach and Clear. This mod costs 9. Yes, 9 energy. But for what it does, I think it is beyond worth the cost. This mod states that when using a grenade launcher, aka Anarchy, damaging a boss, a champion, or breaking a combatant's shield reloads your stored weapons and causes the combatant to take increased damage for a short time. Now on the surface, this is absolutely wacky strong. I do have a few caveats though. We do need to find out how long a quote, short duration is. And depending on if it stacks with something like Weapons of Light, will determine if it is useful for raids. But in Nightfall content, bonus damage when dealing with champions by just hitting them with Anarchy? This is wild. Like, just absolutely insanely wild. Again, maybe it's a super short damage buff duration, or maybe it's only a really small damage buff, and maybe there's a really long cooldown to reapply this mod. But assuming all three of those things aren't true, I think this may be the best mod the game has ever introduced. Man, that mod has me pumped up. But continuing on, Glacial Inheritance is another brought back mod that allows defeating targets with your stasis super to refund super energy. I didn't see a ton of talk about this mod in the past, but it seems at least decent. The problem this season is it's going to be competing with a lot of other strong class item mods, and its 6 energy is a bit on the steep side. Warmind's Decree allows Void Splash Damage Final Blows to have a chance to create Warmind Cells. My first thought about this mod goes back to when people used Martyr's Retribution combined with the Solar Splash version of this mod as a really strong build. Could we see a version of that come back with Deafening Whisper? Time will tell, but I think this mod has some cool build potential for sure. Impulse Recycler is a mod that grants grenade energy when getting grenade final blows. This is another one of those mods where we will have to see just how much energy is given back, but again seems like a mod where some interesting builds could be built around it. And the final mod in the seasonal artifact is Energy Accelerant. This mod gives Dragonfly, Chain Reaction, and Firefly Explosions more damage. Spoiler alert here, and I'll give you a second to click away if you don't want to see or hear it. But Fatebringer is coming back with Vault of Glass later this month, as well as I have heard Hung Jury will have the ability to roll with Firefly as well. Two iconic Destiny 1 weapons that were really strong as is, and this could benefit them even more so, assuming you get a Firefly roll on them. Thank you so much for watching my video on the seasonal artifact for Season of the Splicer. I'm so excited to have new content to both play and create content for finally here. I hope this video helped you guys, and if so, a like and comment down below really, really helps and is so appreciated. And as always, have a wonderful day.